What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. We're going to talk about what's the real pandemic out here. People think that COVID is the real pandemic. You want to know what the real pandemic is? The real pandemic is assaults against MTA workers. That's the real pandemic. But nobody wants to address that pandemic because we could point fingers directly of the people who are responsible, who's, let, who's letting this happen. And they don't want that. They don't want that. So we're going to talk about the real pandemic. And that's assaults um, against transit workers. I mean, just think about this to all my bus operators out there, right? When did the partitions, right? Now, let's let's be clear about the bus partitions before um, COVID. Those partitions never protected anyone. It, w it was just for show. Those partitions was just for show. They never really protected anyone, right? Now, those partitions came into play after 20... 10 after Edwin Thomas was killed on a, on a B-46 out of Flatbush, right? So we're dealing with a company and a union that's reactive instead of proactive. Something egregious have to be done before they take our safety serious. Something has to be done. And it seems like a worker have to die before this union or the MTA take our safety um, serious. Now, the MTA extended the partitions during COVID, right? So you mean to tell me that if COVID would have never came, bus operators would have never got the true protection that they needed? They would have never got the protection that they needed. The assaults alone before COVID should have been enough for bus operators to have a better partition. And let's be clear, the partition that they have now is still not good enough. Bus operators in, in New York City need a separate compartment to get inside their bus. They need their own door to get inside their bus that's cut off from the general public. Assaults are at an all-time high. They are at an all-time high. In fact, the union says that, and this was about three years ago, the union said that there's an assault every 36 hours on the transit worker. Think about that. There's an assault every 36 hours on a transit worker. You, you, would, you would think that, I mean, like, we, we dealt directly with the public where there's some type of um, animosity where we get into confrontation and conflict with the public and, and you know, those type of things happen. But we're driving people back and forth. We're operating trains. We're operating buses. We're cleaning. Why are assaults so high on transit workers? And why does the MTA decide to take action after one of us get killed, after one of us gets serious, seriously injured. In this case, it was COVID before the MTA decided to extend the bus partitions, which I don't get. I, I don't I don't get that at all. Now, another thing we have to examine is the role that the MTA play in these assaults. If you notice, the MTA played a game of turning the public against the workers. For an example, every contract that we that we have, there's an MTA spokesman that comes out and say, well, you know, the fares are going up because um, we have to give workers raises. You think the public is, is going to be happy about that? Who are they going to take their animosity on? The workers. So nobody points out that the role the MTA play 
on the customers assaulting us even up until today on the weekends in particular you have the MTA sending out tweets saying that there's basically delays because we don't have enough train crews is that supposed to help curb the assaults on workers if you once again pitting the, the, the public against the frontline workers why don't y'all send out a tweet and say that the MTA bosses aren't hiring fast enough or they're not putting out enough tests to make sure that um, staffing levels are adequate so there won't be delays no the MTA is on Twitter saying um, we can't run it there's not enough crews available so that's why there's delays nobody is talking about the role that the MTA is playing on um, these assaults happening on us and it's and, it, and, it, and it's sad and then once again what is the union doing to protect us during these assaults what fundamentally changed between 2010 when Edwin Thomas got stabbed and killed on a B-46 and um, Garrett Goebel getting killed last last March. What fundamentally changed regarding our safety? Nothing. Nothing changed regarding our safety when it comes to transit workers, even in death. Think about that. You know the this is this is what the union. Um, this is how they view change. Oh, you know we're 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 lobbying our politicians so we could get a law passed or whatever the case is right so they they got a law passed a couple of years ago how is that working for us transit workers someone explained to me how is that law deterring people from attacking transit workers can someone can someone explain to me how is that law deterring people from assaulting us it's not it's not the union just used that for campaign propaganda yeah you know we got a law passed but what they not saying is that that law will not protect you it will not deter people from attacking you that's a major issue that's a major issue if you guys is watching right now could you please share out the video we gotta share out the video we gotta we gotta um you know give people this important information we cannot let the union leadership control the narrative with these lies, right? But what fundamentally changed with the union relationship with the MTA regarding these assaults? The only thing the union did was say, oh, we're going to lobby politicians. We're going to get all the DAs together and say that, you know, we're tired of these assaults. They're not tired of these assaults because you want to know what? Read the bill that they're trying to pass now. The bill that they're trying to pass now is saying that you will be sentenced up to a year in jail. Whenever you hear the word up to, just know that nobody is getting up to a year in jail for assaulting a transit worker. Unless their rap sheet is from here to, 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 to California. If they rap sheet not from here to California, they not getting up to a year in jail. And then what happened to the felony? What happened to the felony? Oh, if you assault a, a, a transit worker, it's a felony. I thought a felony is a felony. Why, why, are we, why are we backtracking back to a misdemeanor? That makes absolutely no sense. So with the union is pressing this year, you're going to see them with um, DAs, as we've seen them a couple of weeks back. We're going to see them with politicians. And this is all for one hand wash the other. The politicians stand with us to act like they're going to push a a, 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 a bill of um, protecting transit workers. And in return, the politicians get Coke money, our hard earned dollars given to them um, for doing nothing. It's all a smokescreen. It's all a smokescreen. A real deterrent from for, for protecting transit workers is mandatory time in jail. Mandatory. If you get if you if you get caught assaulting a transit worker, you get a year in jail. I don't care how um, clean your record is. 
I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what the situation is. You get up, you get a year in jail, possibly more. Possibly more. That's the only way to deter assaults against transit workers is mandatory time in jail. We are civil servants. We are public servants. We should be protected to the fullest extent of the law, not up to. We are here to provide a service for the government. We should not be the subject of assaults and our agency should not be pushing or creating a narrative that will perpetuate assaults against transit workers. And that's what they doing. Like I said before, with these, um, with our contract, with our contract, um, oh, you know, we, we, we have to raise the fare because we have to give transit workers raises. They play a role in the assaults against us. That's the role that the MTA play in assaults against us. And um, the smokescreen of getting bills passed to protect transit workers is perpetuated by Local 100. They know for a fact that these bills will do nothing to protect transit workers, right? There, there, there's never an assault march. There's never an outcry to really protect the members. The only time you see the union um, talking about assaults is when they when they create these surprise um, uh, press conferences where they don't invite the members. Why wouldn't you invite the members to a press conference talking about assaults? Why would you guys want to control the narrative or handpick the people to come um, talk about these assaults? That makes absolutely no sense. You want to know why? You want to know why they do it? They do it because they know that they play a role in these assaults. They don't want workers to come and say, well, our union didn't do nothing to protect us either. We get assaulted no matter how egregious the assault is. I'm talking about stabbings. I'm talking about women getting punched in the face. We're talking about killings. Absolutely no safety stand down. You would think that nothing has happened when we get assaulted on the job. Like I said, no matter how egregious the crime is against us, there's absolutely no safety stand down regarding um, when we get assaulted on the job. And who's directly responsible for that? The local 100 leadership. They are directly responsible for that type of stuff. You know, one of the things that I personally take serious on this job is the assaults. That's why I came up with the decision to start having assault marches. I never been assaulted up until last week, last Monday. So it's been a week since I've been assaulted, but I always t took assault serious because this shouldn't be the type of job where we don't think that we're going to make it back home to our family. This shouldn't be the type of job where our family don't think that we're going to walk back into the door the same way that we left. Unfortunately, being a transit worker, that has become our reality. Our reality has been we may not make it back home to our families. That's why every year we have an assault march. Never did I think during my time in transit that. When we bring out that mock casket for the assault march, never would I thought that one of our coworkers would actually be in there because of an assault. Never. Never. But it has become a reality. And what are we to do? You know what I'm saying? This year assault march, we didn't have an assault march last year because of COVID and um, other things that was happening. But this year, we will have an assault march. Um, this time, we will be doing it at City Hall. And we looking at maybe like a May, June type of date. We will be at City Hall. And we will be holding everyone accountable um, for, 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 for not protecting us. We'll be holding everyone account accountable. I mean, from 
the union leadership for not pushing for real reform um, regarding the protection of transit workers to the district attorney for not prosecuting assaults against us. The lack of prosecution assaults against us. The lack of ideas of how to protect transit workers. Like the union, it, it, it's, it's a blame game that they play. You have local 100. They will blame the MTA in a way. They will blame the city in a way. And you'll see all these people blaming each other. And while they blaming each other and pointing fingers, nobody coming up with the smart ideas or the ideas on how to protect transit workers. Like, since the, it seems like the MTA can't protect us, even though the MTA have an obligation, the MTA have an obligation to protect transit workers. They, they have no choice to protect transit workers, right? They're not doing what they have to do to protect us, right? And the union is not making sure that they do what they have to do to protect us. So for an example, a lot of assaults happen to conductors while we are doing our, our, our platform sweep, our platform observation, or during our door operations, right? Why are we doing a 75-foot sweep um, pulling out the station? or platform observation while we're pulling out of the station. That 75 feet should be cut down to 25 feet. Or we don't do nothing at all. Or when the train start to move, or if you see, if you don't see nobody moving with the train, then uh, you could close your window. No more 75 feet. We get assaulted doing that 75 um, um, feet platform observation. How about we no longer open up our windows and point? If the MTA um, had more faith in their training, we don't have to point. We could look and acknowledge the board. You know what I'm saying? Whether someone look or acknowledge the board, you have conductors that point at boards that say do not open. That mistake is going to happen regardless because people are not paying attention, right? Unfortunately, some people don't pay attention, but the majority of the workforce is paying attention. The majority of us is paying attention. So maybe the union should say, you know what? Because I got assaulted during my door operations. Well, maybe um, maybe we uh, conductors don't need to point no more. They can acknowledge the window. They can acknowledge the board through the window and, and, and open up their doors. Why the union isn't promoting that? Why the union isn't promoting that? There's things that the union could do to protect us, but they not. And, and the MTA could say, you know what? Uh, yeah, you guys don't have to point no more. But the MTA, when you get hired by the MTA for the people who's not MTA workers, the day you get hired at the MTA, they spend the next 25 years setting traps trying to get you fired. Right. So if you no longer have to point at the conductor indication board, then what is the safety unit? going to do out there when they looking to take you out of service for not pointing at the board right the mta spend 25 after hiring you they spend the next 25 years setting traps trying to fire you that's what they do right so there's things that the mta can do that the union could do to hold the mta directly accountable for these assaults but they have yet to do it they have yet to do it. And the people who are paying the ultimate price is us. Is us. Like, who comes to work to get spit on? Like, that's the worst thing that could happen. I mean, that's not the worst thing, but that's the most humiliating thing that can happen to a worker's be spit on. Especially during COVID. Every day I think about ways of, of handling this, this situation different and beating the mess out of homeboy for spitting on me. But I know that it could have went left, right? And I could have been the one getting arrested and this guy being ended up um, 
let go free. They could have been let go free. But I, I, I would have been the one paying the ultimate consequence. Right? And and it's not done because if I if I think if I see this dude, I don't want to talk about it. Because it's it's just it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And 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 the employer hasn't done nothing to protect us. Forget them about these bills. Forget about all these assault bills. The assault bill that they pushing now does not stop assaults against us. It does not stop assaults against us. The only thing the MTA is worried about is moving these trains. They do not care about our safety. They do not care about our safety. The real pandemic is the assaults against MTA workers. So you trying to tell me once again that bus operators did not deserve a better partition prior to COVID? But when COVID happened, they put up these partitions as if we wasn't getting our butts whipped before coming to the MTA. I mean, before COVID came. But something have to be done to protect transit workers. No, that no assault bill is not enough. The only thing they go do is two, three years later is go back and say, all right, we got to come up with another bill. Then we got to come up with another bill. Then we got to come up with another bill. Why are we wasting our time? It needs to be a mandatory time in jail if you assault a transit worker. Mandatory time in jail. I, I, don't, I don't see it no other way. I don't see it no other way. The union is not doing anything to protect us. As soon as they say, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing in Albany for a new bills, bull, BS. It's BS. The MTA, the whole from September, the whole from September. I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm good. The whole from September to, I think, October, November. That the new NYPD chief was not even coming to the board meetings or something like that. They was pushing everything on NYPD. NYPD is pushing everything on the mayor. So you got everybody pointing fingers at each other. And guess who's suffering? You and I. You and I are suffering while they sitting there doing nothing. They sitting there doing nothing. Nothing at all. We are, we are essential employees. We are not, we're not first responders. We're not, we, we are essential employees. The only thing we do is when there's something on the train is that we are the middlemen to report it to, for the real first responders to come. We can't, we can't be out there giving our wrong terminologies. I get it. You know, it seemed like when you look at first responder, yeah, we the first to respond, but then we call the real first responders because the last thing we need is something that that's going to perpetuate more assaults on transit workers. If people think that we are first responders, first responders render aid. First responders render aid, right? So if someone is incapacitated on the train, we call the real first responders to come and, and render that aid. So we, we can't we can't be throwing out you know, improper terminologies because then you will have someone really in distress and they say, oh, the conductor didn't hurt. They're a first responder. No, we, we we're not first responders. We, we call the first responders. The only thing that um, train crews, um, I don't even think that bus operators are trained and, 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 and uh, they not, bus operators are not trained in servicing their buses. So we can't even say that. So, but as far as train crews is concerned, the only thing that we are first responders for is door problems, BIEs, pull cords, things of that nature. When it comes to the passengers, we don't render uh, uh, um, CPR. We, 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 we don't, we're not trained um, in, on how to use a defibrillator. 
Um, we, 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 we don't, we don't stop puncture wounds or first aid. We don't do anything like that. That's really what first responders do. And we don't need to create a false narrative of, um, what, uh, our, what our, what our, what they consider us. We are, we are essential, um, employees. In fact, I think they consider us emergency responders, not first responders. I think the correct terminology for um, us transit workers is re emergency responders. Um, yeah, a, a few people was hit me up with that yesterday. By are we first responders? We're, we're not. We're not first responders. We are emergency responders. Uh, we are first to respond to the scene literally but we are not first responders by law we don't render aid we don't give cpr we don't do any of that so we don't want to create that narrative and people say oh you know why don't you help and and people be mad and create this narrative that you know we come and we just call and we just standing there and we're watching and it makes people mad to want to attack us even more um so we don't we don't we don't want to do that um and i believe we have we i, I covered this on the show plenty of times before uh so i just wanted to clear that up because people been hitting me up these past two days or whatever the case is past day um regarding um that type of stuff but um and, and and just to put it in more perspective right let's say our partner we on a train and our partner is having a medical episode are we trained to help our partner or do we call help the real first responders to render aid to our partner so yeah we are the first to respond but we, we are the, we are really the first to report officially that hey rcc we have this situation going on incapacitated person could you please bring the real first responders to do that we are essential employees aka emergency responders right um but I do have my first aid card just in case um, something do go down. But uh, yeah, the real assault on MTA workers is the um, is the pandemic. I mean, the real the real pandemic is assaults on MTA workers um, before COVID. The pandemic, aka the assaults on transit workers. Is not being solved properly. They pointing fingers, um, and all that other stuff. This is the time where we really need to make our voices heard as to what's going on uh, with transit workers, and we must find a way to stick together, um, speak the real truth of the people who's responsible, and and let our voices be heard. Let our voices be heard because if 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 nothing fundamentally changed with us transit workers, then we're going to keep, we're going to keep having press conferences. We're going to keep, um, um, un, 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 having these, having these services and these assault marches and things of that nature. We should not have a job where our family think we are not going to come back the same way we left. Right. In New York city, anything can happen to you coming to and from work. And you want to know what it's sad to say that that's almost understanding because it's crazy out here. But nobody think that we should die in the cost of our duties here at the MTA. Nobody should die driving a bus. Nobody should die operating a train. Nobody should die cleaning the platforms. Nobody should die in the MTA in the course of our duties because of an assault. Bottom line. Bottom line, someone said, has the additional 500 police officers helped at all with the assaults that's been going on last year? No. No. If, if you, it, uh, In fact, I think the assaults kicked up, right? So people ask me, you know, what what, what's, what problem you have with the NYPD and, um, you know, chilling, our, chilling in our quarters. And I had plenty of cleaners saying that the, the NYPD hide out in their facility rooms and things of that nature. The problem that I have with that is, at the least, the, 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 the police should create a deterrence of people to 
not commit crimes against transit workers in the ride in public, right? Their presence alone says a lot because you rarely see someone commit a crime in front of a, 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 a police officer ever. Not even the EDPs. The EDP, EDPs have enough sense to not create a create commit a crime against anyone in front of a police officer. So at the very least, a police officer create a deterrence of protecting um, transit workers. That's why I suggest that at, at least at gap stations, there should be a police officer at the operating position of, um, of uh, at the conductor operating position. Why? Because conductors can see if someone is smoking on a train, because more than likely, when, when from my experience, when I see someone smoking on a train, they will blow the smoke out at the next station. A conductor could report that. A conductor could report um, uh, homeless individuals getting on a train with, with bags and shopping carts, creating safety hazards for the passengers in the train crew. Um, pat, uh, conductors normally know of disturbances going on in the trains right um and where the train operator may not be aware because the train operator is not sticking their head out um the train every stops observing what's going on most of the time so police officers should be at gap stations at the conductor position all the time with a face-to-face -face relief that 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 should be a permanent post for police officers, um, I don't I don't see how the 500 police officers has helped um, transit workers. And, and and think about it like this: we are we are talking about when they say 500 police officers is not really a lot. They talking about 500 police officers over three shifts, over three shifts at 400 and something stations. So we're not really talking about a lot of police officers, right? Now if we're talking about 500 police officers. Each shift, at least 1,500 police officers for each shift, that may create a difference, right? But I don't think that police officers, um, uh, the number of police officers is the issue right now. I think that the deployment of police is the issue right now. That's what I think um, the issue is. It's the deployment of police. Now, what's up, Bill? What's up, bro? What's going on? Ain't nothing, man. You know, this is out in the field, man, getting off, you know? What's going you on? A, you got a better you got a better connection this time around? I should be. Everything <laughs> should be going on. What's up with you? How you feeling, man? Everything all right? You know, I'm I'm still I'm still angry and upset. You know, I, I gotta find ways to do more laughing to keep my mind off of what happened with me because you know, I, I I get upset and I don't want to make a wrong decision to throw everything away. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely, because you already know how they're coming, kid. You already know. You know what yeah, I'm saying? You know, and, and, and the way I felt that they set me up because mm. who in their right mind will assault me while my train is in a station where I can give chase because Absolutely, I'm going to run bro. away quick. That's, that, that's smell kind of fishy right there. I wasn't, you know what I mean? That's why I sent you that. I'm like, yo. That didn't even sound right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I look, I, I could have caught him, and I would have punished him, and then I would have been in jail. They would have fired you, bro. That would have been it. That would have been it right there. That's what they was waiting on. They was waiting Facts. on that leverage right there. You know better than that. Facts. Let me ask you a question because you're a bus operator, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you feel protected in the course of your duties at work? Oh no. I, I I just just now I almost got into a situation where a dude right he wondering why I'm driving slow. I'm like, listen, first of all, you didn't even pay your fare. Like you beefing? I'm like, man, you know what I mean? We're not on your time. You know what I'm saying? We're on a schedule. You know what I mean? So he's like, oh, you know, you drive like a girl. I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You should have took a cab. You know what I mean? But you just came out of nowhere. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, why are you driving so slow? I'm like, man, listen, man. You know, we're not on your time, man. You know, you got to understand. You know what I mean? Like, listen, you know what I mean? Bad enough, a lot of these cats, y'all won't pay anyway. So, like, that should be 
thankful that you on a bus ride for free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, that, 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 that you bring up something as far as why you driving so slow. They don't understand that the MTA tell you how fast you have to drive. And what, what is it, 15 miles per hour? It's supposed to be 15, yup. When you come out of the school room, Zariga, it's 15. That's how they want you to drive. That's the right way to drive, 15 miles an hour. Now, picture driving 15 miles per hour with the ride in public, how mad they would be if everyone was to say, you know what, we ride and we drive at 15 miles per hour, right? Hey, I mean, it is what it is. That's what you're supposed to be doing. That's the rules, you know what I'm saying? So. I mean, if you find you doing it by the book, then it is what it is, right? But what, but what, but what happens, right? Now it's going, it's rules. going to be chaotic. It's going to be chaotic. You don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. The nope. MTA make the rules, but they look at you, yo, bro. Why are you driving so slow, right? Yeah. Not why the MTA got a 15 mile per hour um, um, regulation, right? Why yeah. are you driving so slow? Yeah. So, so what happened? Because you following the rules, you become a target because of the MTA rule, right? Absolutely. Because we don't make, we don't Absolutely. make Absolutely. Off the rip. Off the rip. That's an issue. That's an issue on the bus. That's an issue. That's an issue. All day, every day, that's an issue. Believe that. That's an issue, kid. For real. You, you, don't, you don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. But we get assaulted, and the MTA don't even blink an eye. You know what I'm saying? They they don't blink an eye. And then when oh, you no. when we talk about these big bosses in the system, right? Mm -hmm. When they're in the system, they don't wear badges saying that I'm the president, I'm the superintendent. No. They don't wear they don't wear vests. The only time they vests come out mm -hmm. is during serious incidents mm -hmm. where they want to be identified as a transit worker after the fact. Absolutely. Right? They they need to make a rule for managers and up when they ride the system, if they ride the system, right? Because mm -hmm. we know that they don't ride the system for the same situations of assaults, of homelessness, of the chaoticness that happens no. on these buses and these trains, right? No. There needs to be a rule that they must be identified by a vest that says who they are from the time they enter the station to the time that they leave. Because as soon as a manager enters, enters a bus or any transit facility, they are the manager because if they catch you slipping, they can take you out of service. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? So there needs to be something to make them a subject, and it's sad to say, right? But it needs something to make them a target the same way that we are target because nothing will change until they start being affected. But when you talk about, like, you, you talk about all the time, big stick management and all that, you know they're not going to do that against their own because they need them out there to, you know, be out there putting it to us, man, giving us the business in the Facts. field, man. Facts. So they're not going to do that to them. Fine. You know, that's they, a fact. They, they're not going to do that to them. You know but what we, you know what? We, we, need to, we need to push that because there's no reason why a vice president of any department should be undercover on a bus or a train, right? They should not be undercover because the only reason they undercover is to try to catch one of us slipping. Oh yeah, absolutely. All day, every day. How many times something happened on my train and a superintendent come out of nowhere flashing a badge like 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 they Axel Foley from mm -hmm. from from Beverly Hills Cop? Oh, you know, I'm 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 superintendent so and so. All right, where's your best at? I don't care about your badge. Identify yourself so the people could know who you are. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you were like New York, like you New York undercover on the train. <laughs> Facts, right? They wanna they wanna be police officers. Nah, you out there, you put on the the the, the minute the, the time you step foot in the system and you able to take a work out of service, you should be easily identifiable by your vest. Yeah. So when 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 things is going slow, oh mm -hmm. you know what? There's a superintendent on my bus, you could go speak to them. Yeah, shift it shift it in their direction. Send it right in there <laughs> because and, they and, and, they ain't gonna even want to deal with it. They you don't know how many deal. managers see stuff happen on a train or and they a bus. keep it moving and they keep, keep it moving, it pushing, bro. <laughs> keep it pushing. They be keeping it moving. They'll be saying that. 
But the minute that you make a mistake or I make a mistake, oh, I'm superintendent so and so. Uh, why, why, why didn't you make? Why didn't you make the ADA announcements? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, why, why, oh why, man, you don't make the why, ADA, you in trouble. Oh, facts, man. right? <laughs> facts. But 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 when there's when there's a disturbance on the bus, the EDP on the bus, oh they they keep they they keep their head in their newspaper and because uh, they always acting like they they not paying attention when they paying attention to everything, right? Yeah. So even with us, you don't make a GO announcement. Um, you know I'm superintendent so and so. Um, you you didn't make the GO announcement. Uh, what's your name and patch? Wow, that's it. <laughs> that is it. Because you already know what's to come after that. You know yeah, more, what's to more, come after that. More than likely, they're going to take you out of service. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, bro, there's so much work to be done here, right? There's so much work to be done here that... Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're a first responder? A first responder? Come on, man. We're supposed to be... We're supposed to be at the top of the food chain like everybody else. Yeah. A first yeah. responder. Well, what is a first what is a first responder? What is that? Technically, a first responder is either, and it's by law, you can look it up, you can Google it. EMS, FDNY, and NYPD. They the first to, to respond that can render aid to a situation. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want that title put on us. Because the MTA will make us first responders and not compensate us pop properly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and, and I don't want to be responsible for an EDP having an episode and having to deal with them. Absolutely, because then you got to give mouth to mouth and all that. Not doing You got to be doing all that. And then you know what happens when you don't do it? You'll end up getting sued. Oh, absolutely. Right? So then now you're going to be quality. you're going to be penalized for that. You're going to, you're going to be, you're going to get, you're going to be written up because you're not performing your duties and what you're supposed to as a first responder. Right. You're going right. to be written up. And you might be suspended. You, you ain't going to lose your job, but you definitely might get suspended. You might get put in the street, definitely. Yeah. Right. Depending on how many times it happened. Right? What you say? Yeah, I mean you're right. And, first time, and we, we, first we time you might get a few days. You, no, you no because even us in subways, right? Yeah. If we don't take action on the stuff that we trained on, yeah, we get suspended, right? And, yeah. and when there's litigation, like I've been in a couple of situations where a conductor or a train operator or or someone was in trouble. Just like if someone dropped, if someone was to jump on the tracks, we are trained to react whether we on or off duty right and mm -hmm. if someone could identify us as being a transit worker and we don't pull that emergency along for rcc yeah oh we're in, we in trouble oh. why didn't you take action because you was trained you know what i'm saying but i mean we just we just gotta we just gotta be careful on the language that we use because it could it could, it could put us in, in more grave situation than we what we already you know um need to be in because we don't need more responsibility. We no, need, we definitely we need, don't. Yeah, we need more help and protection. Uh, we, we have a unique job in the system. And by us having a unique job should be enough for us to get hazard pay, for us to get better raises, for us to have the fullest protection and the, and the extent of the law of what's going on around here. You know what I'm saying? But, Jamel, under this administration, man, you know, we got to just keep it all the way real. You know what I'm saying? To, it's not going to happen. Now, why these cats is in there, man? <laughs> that ain't going to happen with them in there. It ain't. I agree. It ain't going to happen. I agree, but the change is coming, my brother. Yo, I mean, I just hope, you know what I'm saying, everybody on the same page is like us because, man, if these people, man, don't see what they seen after what we experienced through this pandemic and everything, then, oh, man, I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to say. Oh. Yeah, I mean, bro, you, you know you know, one thing that I admire about us transit workers is our resilience, our ability to keep our head down and still do our job safely, still come to work to perform our duties, to the to the fullest extent amidst this war 
that's happening with us transit workers, right? Because we have management getting at us. We have the public getting at us. We have the union in some instances getting at us. But we yeah. still come to work every day to perform our job with resilience. We put our, we put our heads down and continue to work. That's one thing that I admire Absolutely. about us transit workers, right? Absolutely. I admire that about this, this, the, the, the people in this agency. I you put a lot of that. work in, man. You put and a lot of work it. in, but we don't get what we deserve, though. But that's 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 going to change, right? That's going to that's going to change because because we are we want we we do want the respect of NYPD. We do want the respect of FDNY. We do want the respect of sanitation, right? Absolutely. But that don't come with a title. No. That comes with us sticking together and, and, and fighting for, for everything. Like, you will have coworkers saying, well, you know that we, you know that um, we got we to gotta pick and choose our battles. Nah. We, this ain't the time for us to pick and choose. We got to fight every battle moving forward because technically yeah. there's not a lot left for us to lose. And we got to go in, and we got to go in strong when we going into the battle. You can't be going in there half-stepping, and that's what's been going on. These cats been going in there just sitting there, not saying nothing. You know what I mean? That's Allowing everything to just happen. Like, you know, take it all away. That's that's the mentality these cats got. You know? They going in there that's like they're just sitting there. They going in there just sitting there. Whatever the MTA is saying, they just sitting there like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Right or That's wrong? A fact. Because That's if a they fact. have I mean, any real it, fight in them, first and foremost, they'd be like, nope, you know, off the rip, everything will be a no. Before we even open up discussion or anything, what about this? What about this? What about what happened with this during this pandemic? What happened? No, everything is a no. That's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, right or wrong? You're right. I mean, what after everything I that we didn't experience, nah, everything should be handed to us with no problem. Everything should be handed to us. Everything that we're entitled to as transit workers, man, we should be entitled to it with no problem. It shouldn't be. You see, they don't, you see they don't say nothing about has to pay no more. Wow. Why because they don't it, say nothing about it? Why? Because they don't need no incentive to get us to work. We back at work already, right? So, so they 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 use oh hazard pay. Oh, we're gonna come to work. We're gonna get hazard pay. We're gonna nah, nah. We should get certain titles. Should get hazard pay anyway. Like track workers, bro. Yeah, bro. Track workers should get hazard pay anyway. And yeah, automatically, right? Automatically. Automatically, yeah, that's they a should get that. Job. In fact, that's um, a track job. workers, um, um, uh, work train and flaggers. Anybody that that works around on the, on the right of way, around live third rail, live trains, and diesel fuel should get hazard pay automatically, bro. Automatically. Word. You know, you you know what type of health problems they be enduring. Like throughout the course of time, like wow, breathing and all that, they be experiencing a lot. Crazy, really? bro. Oh, oh. Yeah, signals everybody. Everybody that works on the right of way needs to get, you know, you know, has to pay. But I tell you what, man, change is coming. Especially with me being assaulted. If you notice, if you notice, they haven't they haven't released, uh, um. Uh, 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 a surveillance tape that you know with my soul it's been a week you haven't seen that one of one one video of me but it's all good no I'm glad that i experienced being assaulted because now i'm speaking from a first person point of view and i'm gonna go a thousand percent for my soul absolutely brother you're supposed to you know what i'm saying i'm gonna go i go a thousand percent for everyone else i'm gonna go a thousand percent for mine because now i see the psychological game getting assaulted play. I see the anger 
that a, a, a person may have after getting assaulted. I see all of that. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it, it's not a good feeling. Oh no! It's not a, it's, it's not, it's not a good feeling, bro. But yo, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. Definitely. I gotta make a move. I gotta get some food. Okay. And um, we'll speak later, man. Oh, Thanks yeah. for tuning yeah, in. Yeah, no doubt, my brother. Be safe out there. All, all right. right. All right. All right. Peace. Yeah. But remember, y'all, I need y'all to remember the um, the uh, the real pandemic against transit workers is um, the assaults on transit workers. The assaults on transit workers is the real pandemic. And if nothing don't fundamentally change with us transit workers as far as um, better protection, a harder fight to protect us and things of that nature. We're going to continue to have press conferences. We're going to continue to um, do the things that we don't want to do to bring awareness to, to, to our assaults. Something have to fundamentally change either with the MTA or the union to, 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 to really protect us transit workers. Something have to fundamentally change. And until then, we're going to continue to get our butts whipped out here. Um, what we have to do, I want you guys to be safe. I want you guys to be vigilant. Um, I just seen a video of a dude walking up to a lady in a store and saying a couple of words to her and cutting her face. That's a fear of mine dealing with the public here. Um, so, you know, try to keep a safe distance with customers um, if you can. Uh, you know, give yourself enough distance to react just in case something happens. Um, refuse to talk to, to, to customers at an unsafe distance. Um, every day we leave to go to work, our goal is to come back the same way that we left out. And we must ensure our own safety. It's us against everyone else while they point fingers. Bottom line, to the ride in public, we are not your enemy. We are allies in this. I've been saying this for years. If we aren't safe as transit workers, then you guys are not safe as the riding public. When the, when the MTA take riders, safe, I mean workers, safety first, or they, or they or, or take our safety seriously, then they will take you guys' safety seriously. There's 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 not one without the other. Trust me when I tell you. Trust me when I tell you. So we need to be allies in this. We do not need to be enemies in this. Um, the real enemies is the people who's creating or allowing these assaults to happen on you guys and us. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.